and gentlemen, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. And guess what? Welcome to another episode, specifically episode 24 of your favorite show, Hashtag LNT with your favorite man, Ahmed Ali, coming to you live from the holy city of Karbala every night <coughs> up until the end of Safar, 10.30 p.m. Karbala time, discussing a variety of topics ranging from culture to religion to scientific. Uh, basically, we cover every single topic out there. That's why we're so unique. But tonight, <clears throat> we're talking about a topic that has been debated over many decades now and that affects our Earth scientifically. What is that topic and how is it going to affect us? We'll find out, but after we check out what's trending. Again, we do welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, for those who love Google+, I don't know who still uses that, uh, but for those who do know about it, well, check this out. Google said on Monday that it would shut down Google+, Plus, the company, uh, you know, the uh, long-struggling answer to Facebook giant social uh, network. So uh, Google tried to create something similar to Facebook where people can connect to add someone uh, and so on and so forth. But after it discovered a security vulnerability that exposed the private data of up to 500,000 users, Google did not tell its users uh, about this security breach or this security issue uh, when it was found back in March because it didn't appear uh, to anyone uh, that had gained access to that information. And the company's privacy data protection office decided it was not legally required to report it. The research giant said in a blog post. Now, we just say that out there because this huge giant called Google is, is now uh, having a security breach. And we see these websites from Facebook to Twitter to Instagram and now um, Google Plus. Well, the thing is, when was the last time you used Google Plus? I never heard of someone saying, you know what, you add me on Google Plus, you know, and, and hit that plus button for my picture. I literally never heard someone say that. Maybe I live under a rock, but I never heard anyone. Let's jump into tonight's topic. Once again, we do welcome everyone joining us tonight. Now, I remember, and so do you guys, uh, we guys remember back in high school when we discussed you know, global climate change and how the world is changing. Uh, no, not falafel, but you know, changing the world and, and how much uh, the world is changing because of uh, the carbon dioxide in the air that's you know, absorbing the heat of the sun. Now these were just you know, a few lessons that the teacher in grade 10 gave us. Uh, and then later on, we just forget about it. No, there, there was no importance given to the topic. But yesterday, a report issued by the UN Intergovernmental Panel for Climate Change uh, the IPCC demanded governments around the world to take rapid, and I quote, rapid, far-reaching, and unprecedented changes in all aspects of society to avoid disastrous levels of global warming. Now, so you can tell this is, some, this is turning into something serious. It's not, you know, lessons from your grade 10 science teacher. Now it's something serious where it might have an impact on our lives. The report also mentioned that our planet will reach 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels as early as 2030, uh, you know, precipitating the risk of extreme droughts, wildfires, floods, food, so food shortages for hundreds of millions of people across the world. Now the date, 2030, which falls within the lifetime of many people living on this planet right now, is based on current levels of greenhouse gas emissions. Now, is it something, or is it time to do something about this, or should we just ignore it? Uh, or maybe the media right now is focusing on this, maybe just to make a sequel 
uh, for the 2012 movie, which everyone saw, you know, the end of the world 2012. Uh, so maybe it's just a sequel for that movie, or it's something, s something uh, serious that we need to focus on. That's why hashtag GLNT is focusing on that tonight. That's why we chose the question to ask you. Very simple. Should we be concerned about climate change? Now, you don't have to be a scientist like Ahmed Ali, you know, and, you know to participate. Uh, you, all you got to do is just think about it. You know, the amount of gas that we put in the air, is it affecting global warming? And is it affecting the heat of the sun coming into the earth? If you think it is, let us know. If you, do, if you don't think it is, also let us know at plus 964 774 067 1836. Uh, and we're also live on Facebook, so you can guys can go check it out there and let us know what you think about tonight's question. I'm excited. I hope everyone is. Let's take a quick break. Come back to you guys very short. Welcome back, dear viewers. Hope everyone, inshallah, enjoyed that 10 second or 5 second break. But before that, uh, I just enjoyed that a lot. But uh, before the break, we asked the question, should we be concerned about climate change? Should we or should we not? If you think we should, shoot us a, uh, you can call us live, free on WhatsApp. You can shoot us a text message. You can shoot us a voice message letting us know what you think about tonight's question. But, you know, when the crew of Hashtag Guarantee sees an interesting report, sees a report that needs to be discussed and the whole world's talking about it, then we need to analyze it. That's why tonight we chose to talk about global warming on tonight's episode. Now, climate change is happening. The earth is becoming warmer. No one can deny that. It's happening right now, tomorrow, the, the day after tomorrow. It's happening. Now, scientists have known of the heating potential of you know the greenhouse effect uh, of gases such as CO2 carbon dioxide since the, the uh, since at least 1859 when British physicist uh, John Tyndall first began experiments leading to the discovery that CO2 carbon dioxide in the atmosphere absorbs the sun's heat now the intergovernmental uh, panel uh, on climate, uh, climate change, uh, the IPCC, was created back in 1988 by the World uh, Meteorological Organization and the United Nations Environmental Program to review research on global climate change. Now, the IPCC, in its first statement uh, back in 1990, stating that emissions resulting from human activities are substantially increasing the atmospheric uh, concentrations of the greenhouse gases, resulting in what? Resulting in an addition warming of the Earth's surface. That's why right now in Basra during the summer, they, you know, they, 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 they bake eggs on the ground because it's so hot. I don't know if, if the videos are real, but I've seen it. And, and it's crazy. They just put a frying pan on the asphalt and the frying pan gets hot. They put oil and they fry an egg. SubhanAllah. If it's true, then that's crazy of how hot the earth is, is, is becoming. Even today in Canada, today in Canada, the, I, when, when I was talking to a friend, they say that today is 30 degrees Celsius. And yesterday night was zero degrees Celsius. So the climate is going up and down. No one can actually get to know what's going on. But when we have reports that are telling us uh, that, the, uh, that the planet will reach the crucial threshold of 1.5 degrees Celsius above pre-industrial levels as early as 2030, that's concerning. We need to look at this further. That's why in the same report, it says that the planet is already two thirds uh, of the way there. You know, with global uh, temperatures having warmed up one degrees already. Now, avoiding this or avoiding going even higher than that will require significant action in the next few years. Significant action. We'll get to talk about that, but I have to read this text message from... No, from India. 
Uh, yes, we should be concerned because global warming affects uh, many things, including the way we live. Absolutely, uh, Nal from uh, India. Thank you very much uh, for joining us uh, tonight. Now, uh, according to Andrew King, a lecturer uh, in climate science at the University of Melbourne, says, and I quote, that this is concerning because we know there are so many more problems if we exceed 1.5 degrees Celsius global warming, including more heat waves and hot summers, greater sea level rise, and for many parts of the world, worst droughts and rainfall extremes. Now, we see this now. If you look at the west, there, 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 there's floods, there's wildfires. If you look at the east, just a few days ago, there was another, uh, in, in Indonesia, there, there, there was another uh, tsunami that hit. So if you're looking at the west or the east, both parts are being hit. If you look at the north, Antarctica, um, then uh, you see the ice melting. And they're saying in a few years, the ice is going to melt. Not in a few, but you know, in a couple of decades, the ice is going to melt and you see the entire world uh, flooding. However, global net emissions of carbon dioxide would need to fall back 45% from 2010 levels by 2030, reaching net zero around 2050 in order to keep uh, the warming around 1.5 degrees Celsius. Now, this all might, si uh, might sound scientific, uh, but if you were to read the reports based on this and you were to, to, to go watch documentaries, uh, the recent one uh, by CNN or BBC, then you'll see um, how dangerous it actually is. Now you might ask yourself, who is causing all of this? You know, if you were to ask some extremists, like, oh, America, America's causing this, America's doing this to kill the world. Baba, chill. You, it's, it's, you, you drive a car with, with a messed up engine and, and uh, huge ga like dark gas coming out of the exhaust and you're blaming America for global climate change. I'm not here to defend anyone, but at the same time, say something, you know, that's, that's reasonable. But we go back to the question of asking ourselves, who is responsible or who's causing all of this? Well, tens of hundreds of thousands of scientists uh, more in, in more than 100 uh, different countries have accumulated an overwhelming amount of evidence pointing to a clear conclusion. What is that conclusion? That conclusion is us. We're the main cause behind global warming. Believe it or not, we'll get to read that. Why? Because simply, it's chemistry. Number one, it's chemistry. Let's go through these nine points as to how humans are responsible for global climate change. Number one, simple chemistry. When we burn carbon monoxide minerals, carbon dioxide is emitted. Number two, Basic accounting of what we burn and therefore how much CO2 is emitted. So the amount we burn, the amount of carbon dioxide we emit, we generate, we create, the more the heat sun is absorbed into the earth. Now measuring CO2 in the atmosphere and trapped in ice to find that it's increasing and that the levels are higher than anything we've seen in over hundreds of thousands of years ago. Number four. Chemical analysis of the atmospheric CO2 that reveals that the increase is coming from burning fossil fuels. So now you're wondering where uh, those oil refineries are uh, and, and you know that the big flame coming up. Then now you know what's going on. Number five, basic physics that show, that show us that CO2, carbon dioxide, absorbs heat. Number six, mentoring climate conditions uh, monitoring uh, climate conditions to find that recent warming of the earth is correlated and follows rising CO2 emissions. Number seven, ruling out natural factors that can influence climate like the sun and ocean cycles. Number eight, employing computer models to run experiments of natural uh, versus human uh, influenced stimulations on earth. Number nine, Consensus among scientists who consider all previous lines of evidence and make their own conclusions. Basically, what we can summarize from this, 
anything that we burn, anything that we use that has carbon dioxide out. We humans, we take in oxygen, we give out carbon dioxide. Believe it or not, even Ayajasin does that. He takes in oxygen and gives out carbon dioxide. So when we give out carbon dioxide, and at the same time, we have a lot of trees being cut down, where does car that carbon dioxide go if, it's, if the trees are not taking, uh, taking in carbon dioxide? Where is the carbon dioxide going? It's going to the atmosphere of the earth, absorbing the, sea, the, the, the sun's heat, taking it into the earth, but won't take it back. So it'll trap it within the earth's atmosphere. But we just got a text message from? Ali Panchar, or sorry, Ali Panchar, uh, if he's from Pakistan, Ali Panchar, uh, very famous name actually, uh, Pancharchi's uh, the big family. But as you said, global warming has been talked about ever since I can remember, but I do not But I do not see anything changing in the world. Thank you very much, Ali from Pakistan, uh, for joining us uh, tonight. Yes, it, it, it has been talked about uh, for, for many years now. If we were to go back from, 18, uh, from the 18th century, late 18th century, and then uh, the IPCC in 1988. So it does go back w in decades back uh, to see and try to tell us and warn us. You know, in grade 10, we just thought, for me personally, I just thought science class was you know was whatever but when I grew up and grade 11 12 I actually found it interesting and when you get to university so on and so forth but that's not let's, let's not focus uh, on me but let's go back to global warming now there's another question that is that rises when we've talked about all of this what happens if we like neglect it I you know it's just forget about it and skip it just like what we've done in the previous years you know, just like when the 2012 movie came out, everyone was scared. Then 2012 came, nothing happened. Is it the same or is it different? Now, some of the long-term effects of global climate change are as follows. According to the third and fourth National Climate Assessment Report, now number one, temperatures will continue to rise. Number two, frost-free sessions will lengthen. Summers, springs, the lengthen. Number three, changes in perception patterns. Number four, more droughts and heat waves. We see that. Number five, hurricanes will become stronger and more intense. And we see that. We see the, the, the floods. We see Florence. And we see many more that are occurring both in the east and the west. Number six, sea level rise will rise one to four feet by 2100. So we're in 2018. So do the math. 2018, or just 18 minus 100, what is that? That's 88. So in, in 88 years, I'm going to be around, for, I'm, I'm going to be around almost 112 uh, years old. So by the time, I won't even be alive by that time. Maybe I will, you never know. But, you know, no, no, you won't. I just think that he's going to live up to Noah's age. Uh, but anyways, what I'm trying to say is that it's a long-term run, but we have to also think about our generation on raising them, how to, you know, be more cleaner. Now, another one is the Arctic, which looks like it's becoming ice-free in the near future as well. Now, what are the ways to stop climate change or to stop global warming from actually happening. What are the ways? Now there are nine simple ways that you can, you know, uh, try to stop, not but try to reduce uh, the damages that will happen on Earth. Number one, change a light. You know, a lot of people when they go to Walmart or go to you know Home Depot or whatever, and they see a light for like six dollars, and they see a like three packs of lights for two dollars you know an Arab or anyone brown they're gonna go for that three pack for two dollars they're not gonna go for a six dollar every time something happens if it blows up you know I just, I just get I get nine well, if you ask them why are you buying that and not that they're gonna say I buy nine bulbs for the same amount 
as buying one bulb. So, you know, it, cheap steaks do do that, but at the same time, people, you have to change. Change your regular lights with fluorescent lights. You know, it's first of all, you're actually not spending, you're not using more energy, using less energy than the regular bulbs. And at the same time, they look nice. I mean, look how nice lighting is, and this is fluorescent. It's not regular lights. But anyways, drive less. Tip number two, drive less. The amount of gas that the car burns, and this goes out to me, I drive a lot. So, for, you know, t take a bike ride, uh, but not in like Ajah and Iraq where there's like a desert storm uh, and, you know, a dust storm coming in, sandstorm, no. Uh, but, you know, for, for, for those who are, you know, driving more and, you know, uh, continuously take a bike ride, walk. Uh, if, if there's a short trip they need to get to, you know, take a bike. If you're going to university and university is close, don't use that car. Don't waste your gas. Don't, use, don't waste your money. Save the earth and just drive to work or drive uh, to university. Number three is very important. Number three is, is, is very dangerous at the same time. A lot of people do not recycle. Recycling is so important. You know, the carbon dioxide that comes out of um, uh, not recycling, and if you do recycle more, you can save 2,400 2, pounds of carbon dioxide per year. And that's just by, uh, you know, recycling half of your household waste. You're not, you know, you're not recycling all, just half of it. Number four, check your tires. A lot of people sometimes, if you know the tire is about 35, uh, and they if it's 28 or 27 uh, psi's, then they're not gonna care. Like, oh, you know what? I'll probably you know inflate, pump it up, and like uh, inflate it, you know, in, in in a couple of days. But actually, when you have your tires at 35 psi then you're actually not wasting a lot of gas because the car is not pulling itself, it's easily moving. Number four, or number five actually, use less hot water. The amount of carbon dioxide used to heat up the water is enormous. 500 pounds of carbon dioxide you can save by just using less hot water. And number six, avoid products with a lot of packaging. Now, you know, especially with Amazon, they're bringing uh, if you're buying something big, they bring extra packaging for you. But at the same time, they're not as much packaging as other uh, companies uh, out there. Number seven, adjust your thermostat. You know, two degrees, uh, you know, putting it down in the winter, and then two degrees up in the summer, you're not going to feel that much different. But at the same time, you're saving about 2,000 carbon dioxide per year. 2,000 uh, pounds of carbon dioxide a year. So if I save 2,000 pounds and I Jassim saves, you know, 2,000 pounds, or he's not going to save anything, but um, Ali Maytham and then Mustafa, and you know, the whole crew of hashtag guarantee, you have what? You have almost, you know, what? 20,000 uh, pounds of carbon dioxide. Right there, we're saving the world. So why don't you do the same? Uh, you, so put out your, your nafat sopa and use the electronic ones. Uh, but another one, plant a tree. If you're living in a government, or sorry, if you're living in a country where there's a lot of trees, try not to cut as many trees down. Or if a tree is brought down, try to plant one. And if, there, if you have extra space, just plant a tree. It looks nice. At the same time, it takes in carbon dioxide and it gives you oxygen. It's good for the environment. Number nine, Turn off any electronic devices that you're not using. You know, at night, don't keep your laptop or computer plugged in and turned on. Turn it off. Save electricity, because by saving electricity, you're saving money, and you're not wasting and you're not, you know, uh, emitting any carbon dioxide, thousands uh, of pounds of carbon dioxide. But we just got a text message last for tonight. From who? Faaz from the UK, he says, uh, thank you for focusing on such an important topic that is not discussed on uh, other Shia TV channels. Thank you very much. That's why hashtag it is unique. But global warming is very important and we should all work together to help end it. Thank you very much, uh, Faaz from the UK for joining us tonight. Uh, but lastly, 
what we can say is that follow these nine tips that we mentioned and at the same time think about if if you know global warming is not going to affect you uh, within what um, 12 13 14 50 years it's it might affect the next generation it's it, it is affecting us uh, from the amount of diseases and and things going on because of uh, how many gases are in the world or on the atmosphere of the earth but at the same time think of the next generation raise awareness and we hope that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, keeps everyone on this planet safe so should we be concerned absolutely yes we should uh, but not for another hundred years so uh, that's a good thing for me and you but anyways thank you very much for tuning in wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh